Hi. Hi. So please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. James Allen. Uh, I work with uh, EMD Electronics, uh, developing uh, liquid crystal uh, and polymerizable liquid crystal based materials. So what do we see right here? Uh, so what we're looking at here is a, uh, a full color waveguide using uh, polarization volume holographic technology. Um, so what it utilizes uh, is it's a layer of glass and on top of that we have a, a photosensitive alignment layer and then on top of that we put a, uh, a layer of liquid crystal which is then polymerized to give a solid film uh, and that can be used to create diffraction gratings or um, diffraction, uh, diffraction lenses. Uh, so yeah, what we're offering really uh, is uh, the, the materials to enable this technology. Um, we, we're not, waveguides? Yeah, yeah, to enable waveguide technology, to enable ultra-thin lenses for AR and VR. We're not making the waveguides ourselves, we're making the materials uh, and we're making them available to companies to develop and improve um, their, their existing portfolio. So waveguides are very intricate. Mm. There's some very small details in waveguides. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this is this uses uh, yeah gratings with very very narrow pitch. Um, uh, yeah, so one of the advantages of this technology compared to say other grating technologies like so for example surface surface relief gratings SRG um, yeah, is is this is a solution processable. So the uh, so the intricate details uh, come out of the uh, the photo alignment process. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to avoid the, the kind of like uh, reflections that, that go in different directions? Sometimes? So it's definitely like, things or? that people are working on. Like we, uh, as I said, we're not, we're not trying to produce a waveguide. This is a very simple waveguide design uh, and it's got a relatively limited field of view as, um, uh, yeah, as a result of that. And yeah, and you see some of these rainbow reflections. It's something that people in the industry are actively working on to, uh, to improve upon. Uh, and yeah, as I said, these materials enable lots of different waveguides. With the same material, we're told that fields of view um, in excess of 50 degrees is probably possible, and then we're working to still improve these materials uh, to give even larger fields of view. Nice. And what do we have here? Uh, so this uh, demonstrator uses the same technology, uh, also um, a polarization volume hologram. This is also referred to as a pentrapnum berry grating. Um, so what we see here is you'll see two images um, and neither of those are actually the true size of the image below. Uh, if we slide in one of these, um, slide this in, this is moving uh, just polarizers, so circular uh, polarizers, left and right handed polarizers. And what that does is it selects for a magnified uh, and a demagnified image. So if I slide out one polarizer and slide in the other one, you'll see this image is now small. Um, and then uh, we move back and then the image is enlarged. So it's actually the same grating. It's the same grating doesn't move, that's in the middle. And this is about a, um, an ultra thin layer. It's less than, uh, well, it's approximately one micrometer thick in that order of magnitude. Uh, and it allows you to create, yeah, um, lenses that are ultra thin and lightweight. Nice. Um, how does it compare with the uh, that uh, let's say a company like Leica has and making lenses for cameras. Mm. Um, it's just a much smaller version of that. Well, or so obviously those are very, very precision, very engineered lenses. So this, this can be varied and is very customizable. So for example, the focal length is varied by changing the grating pitch. Um, and you know we've, we've been working hard on um, reducing the chromaticity of the lenses. So there's, there's all the same consideration with these kind of lenses as you have with traditional lenses. But yeah, advantage really is that they um, they allow for um, like ultra thin ultra lightweight some people have used these uh, types of lenses not our specifically uh, they are to uh, create electro um, electro actuated uh, lenses so um, so you can use these uh, a series of these uh, and then you can use switchable um, wave plates in order to achieve um, different focal lengths uh, when I look at the market of AR VR What's happening? Mm -hmm. uh, are you the leader in supplying all these devices? Well, we're one of the leaders in material supply. So uh, EMD uh, Electronics, um, we have been for a long time a leading provider of liquid crystal materials uh, to the display industry. Uh, we're also now doing uh, OLED materials to enhance that portfolio. And then um, these technologies actually derive from our portfolio of uh, materials we call reactive mesogens. Uh, and so these reactive mesogen technologies have been used uh, for a long time in the display industry as corrective films. So anti-reflection films in OLED, uh, viewing angle corrective films um, in, uh, in LCD. So yeah, so we're a leading provider of materials and allow a lot of companies to realize their, 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 their designs. And the, the mesogen is nothing to do with hating women. It's <laughs> 
<laughs> hating women. No, no, not not misogyny. No, mesogen. So mesogen refers to um, the rigid part within a liquid crystal, which uh, dictates its alignment director. So yeah, that's mesogen, not misogyny. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with that. Cool. Uh, but it's so awesome. It's fascinating to 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 get a peek into the world of materials mm. that you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a very exciting field. Yeah, exactly. Well, in. a lot of a lot of stands around here. You know, everything. Uh, I think we have a sign somewhere up that says "Displays start with us." And I think that's very true. That you know. One of the underpinning, tech, um, underpinning technologies to all displays is the chemistry and the materials that make these um, technologies come alive. Uh, and you know, these have to come from somewhere. And yeah, it's one of our primary focuses is in allowing technology companies to realize their ambitions. It's fascinating. I'm just a YouTuber, right? So mm -hmm. I don't really understand. But it's fascinating <laughs> to understand, to, to, to learn about the, you have some kind of really nice mixture of materials. You put mm -hmm. some electricity and boom, yeah. it looks awesome. You can it's create a, a, a wide image. variety of effects, yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, okay. but thanks a lot. Hey, no problem at all. So here, the display week, there's a bunch of 8K displays, there's 4K 120, and all these new TVs can come with HDMI 2.1, and there's a whole bunch of updates that I'm going to be filming at the Computex 2023 with the HDMI licensing administrator, which are organizing all the display makers, the cable manufacturers, and making sure that they are compatible with each other, there's a stable performance, there's no interference, and um, there's a smooth 8K future with 48 gigabit per second support. And there's the whole um, infrastructure for, for certifying, for testing, for making sure there's no interference with the, with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff that people have. So thanks a lot for watching. Check out my HDMI playlist in hdmi.charbax.com.